I feel it. Terrible. But it's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I just, you know, I don't like cameras. But we're doing this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lacey Zerlip. I am 25 years old, and today is June 22nd of 2022. I have 817 Instagram followers. I went up. Hey, I have 836 Instagram followers. Terrible. It's fine. I don't use Instagram. <laughs> I look like photo is my graduation photo from purchase last year. It's still that photo. It has not changed. There are a couple photos that are up there. Just, just not, not quite there yet. <laughs> just fine. Social media is annoying. <laughs> Hectic for me. Mostly because I can't be here as much as I want to be, so I can't really work with you guys as much as I wish I could. Uh, but it's been fun to watch from the outside and see all the things you guys are doing. I can't wait to actually be back in New York and do these things again. I miss it. I feel like Black Wolves is forever a family to me because it's all my friends getting together to work together and I get to actually do what I love with the people that I love, and that really means a lot to me. And uh, it's a lot of artists that to get, to get together and do the things that they love, which is really awesome. To me, the Black Wolves Collective is like a family of artists who get to come together and <laughs> put out, put out things that they are actually passionate about. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do in theater or in movies or any kind of art coming into the Black Wolf family, you get to do something that you love and show that to other people. I like that. Look at me go. My favorite memory with Black Wolf has to be DNA. the first production of DNA that we got to do I in college. That. The that first was time so I fun. ever got to work with Black Wolves at all. And it was such an interesting experience because I've never been able to do a production so technically different than any other production. It was outdoors. It didn't have any of the real technical parts that most productions have where there's I don't know. people controlling sound or controlling lights. It was all Compared to together with the so actors. Unique. And it was kind of amazing to see a different type of theater be done. I'm actually going to say that it's changed because... I think that the best part of COVID for me was our DNA. Our Zoom DNA like actually got me out of a big rut. It helped me actually do stage management and work and do the thing that I love while also being stuck inside. So yeah, I mean, I did love that DNA. Do not get me wrong. The original DNA was awesome and I'm really sad that it never got to go up. But uh, this last one was also really fantastic and I met some really great people on it. So I'm glad that it, it got to happen. My favorite moment so far in my career has to be getting to work in Minnesota at the Commonwealth Theater because Minnesota. it was the first time I was actually paid to do the thing that I love and I got to stage manage three shows in less than six months and it was kind of an amazing fast-paced experience where I got a lot of, well, experience that I did not have before and I was very lucky to get the opportunity to do that. Am I allowed to say something that hasn't happened yet? Cool. So, like, I'm working on Royal Caribbean at the moment. Super fun, not at all terrible. It, it can be a little annoying. But I do love the job. I'm actually excited for my next contract because I'm going to be on Anthem of the Seas, and we're going to France and Spain and Norway and the Bahamas. And I've never been anywhere other than Israel overseas. So I'm very excited for this next part. Uh, of my life. It's going to be eight months of craziness, but, and then I will be back in New York. <laughs> but I'm very excited to get to go places that I've never been, which is why I took the job in the first place. That's like a hard one, because I want to say my health and my family's health, because that's very important to everybody right now. But I think that 
I, I'm gonna actually have to say like actually getting to spend time with people because being stuck in a ship where you don't know anybody for six months and like you, you meet people, yes, but it's very different from the connection that you have with your friends and family actually that you have known for years. And so leaving that and then going away, I, I missed it a lot. And I'm only here for like three more weeks. So I'm here for a, less than a week, but I'm going home for three weeks to see my family. And so like getting that connection is really important to me right now. I feel like the most important thing right now has to be health. Like, as much as I want to say that the most important thing to me right now is getting my name out there and getting to work on the things that I love, health is so much more important with everything going on. And with the fact that theater isn't actually going on outside, it's really nice to be able to do the work that I'm doing really online and virtually, but health is what's most important right now. And looking out for the people I love to make sure that they're just as healthy as I am is very important to me. I know the answer. But I don't have These one are. favorite movie. If you ask me this in a normal circumstance, I'd say I have a top five or top 10, but I'll give you a couple movies that have shaped me throughout my life. So that would be Princess Bride, Moulin Rouge, and the Goonies. Uh, the Adventures. Right now? If I have to say like a newer movie that has actually been like really important to me recently, I have no idea. <laughs> because I've been stuck on a ship, so I've been re-watching old movies. I mean, I watched Dune seven times on, in the theater on the ship. So, I mean, I could say Dune because it was fantastic. Uh, I could say um, that I've watched Pride and Prejudice like four times because I made my roommate watch it with me because she had never seen it. Um, but I, I really don't. You've never seen Pride and Prejudice? Is that what that point was? Excuse me, sir. It's fantastic. <laughs> Sorry. You would actually probably hate it, so I don't think you would want to watch it. But it's a good movie, and I, I really enjoy Jane Austen. I've actually read that book multiple times, too. So it's not as good as the TV show of Pride and Prejudice. But it's a good movie. Lucy. It's fucking fantastic, guys. Oh, it's so fun to watch. Um, and I love all of you, the different yous, Jacob. It's just so good. Yeah. Always and forever purple. It will never be anything else. Well, I mean, add black to that, but like purple. Forever and always. It's <laughs> it's purple. My favorite color has and always will be purple. I know myself. I'm one of those people. Everything in my room is purple. Purple is just Everything. the best. I have purple nails right now. <laughs> All the time, always and forever. <laughs> I wish I didn't. And it's not only from me, it's from the outside. But like, pressure is always there. And it's it's one of those things that like, I, I wish I didn't feel as much as I feel, but pressure is suffocating sometimes. But I, I, getting through it really is what pushes you along to the next part of what you're doing and the things that you want. You just have to get through that pressure, but it's hard to do. <laughs> I hate pressure, but it is there always. Always. Pressure is I have a hard it's time talking. The one thing that articulate words is my pressure on myself. And I know that that's a terrible thing to say, but the pressure that I put on myself, it, it makes me keep wanting to do the things that I love. I mean, as much as the pressure from other people hurts and is not a fun thing to have, at, at least it's pushing me towards a goal that I know that I should achieve at some point. Yeah. So yeah, pressure is everywhere. <laughs> right now, my number one pet peeve is people who don't know how to use blinkers because it oh, drives me insane. I haven't been driving for a while and I day, still hate that. Driving to my dogs and no one uses a blinker anymore. Why? Why is this not? I just, okay. And then when it comes to theater, I'd have to say a big pet peeve for me are people who are not on time. If you're late, you're, it's not just your 
part of this play or you're part of anything that you're doing that is being messed up by you being late. Respectful. Everyone else has to be pushed back on their Come time on. of what they're it's doing. It's not that hard. <laughs> just because you had to be late. It's not okay. I mean, those are still pet peeves. But I think that I'm going to add to that people who blame you for things that you have not done. So like on the ship, you know, I got to drive a Zamboni. Real cool, real fun on an ice skating rink. And other people also drove the Zamboni, obviously. And there's this one part that is a ramp of plexi. And if you get too close to the ramp of plexi, there become holes in the ramp of plexi because you're using a knife on the ice. And I got blamed multiple times when I never got near the plexi. It, sorry, it bothers me. Blame the correct person, especially a man who says he didn't do it. I'm sorry. That just bothers me so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be kind to yourself, especially <laughs> with everything that's happening. Be patient and be kind and let yourself take time away from everything else just to breathe because you really need to just breathe. <laughs> Relax a little bit. It's okay to not be on top of everything because no one right now is on top of everything. Never is on top of anything. No one is ever on top of everything advice that I'd give myself. Do things for you. Because this job sucks because you're so far away from everybody, but you're doing it because you want to do it. You're doing it because you've always wanted to travel. Yes, it sucks you're missing out on everything that's going on at home. Yes, it sucks that you miss out on people's lives, on weddings, on birthdays, but you're really doing things for yourself and you have to. Even if it's not going to do much to boost your career in the long run, at least you're doing things that are teaching you a lot. I mean, I'm learning so much about tech, but I'm not doing any stage management right now. Take one over the other, I guess. The biggest thing that I've worked with is Logan, Logan Bruner, the man who got me into this collective, yes, which I appreciate more than anything. Uh, have to be the person that I've the biggest name that I've worked with or um, in Los Angeles in theater the biggest name I've worked with is a man named James, James Blackman, Blackman I haven't who talked to him has a while. gotten a lot of recognition for his productions uh, he's a big producer out he in was. LA when it comes to nonprofit Life. theater um, <laughs> uh, it's probably still Logan so, I mean, not a terrible thing. <laughs> it's Logan we're talking about here. But, I mean, not many people know cruise ship people. So I could say names like Duo Quintessence or Tracy Shield. But nobody knows these people. I mean, they were fantastic. I mean, acrobats are always cool to watch. And, like, Tracy has a fantastic voice, but they're not really well-known performers. Eva Van Ho, he is an amazing director and all of the work that he does is so technically diverse and no one does such technically diverse theater out here at all. It's so interesting to see the difference all of his productions have, the small things that he does that no one else thinks about doing, the blood, the doing things on sand or... Oh, he's just, he's very interesting in his directing style, and I would really love to work with him. It's still Ivo Van Hove. I would fucking love to work with Ivo Van Hove. I don't know if I'm allowed to even say that, sorry. <laughs> but Ivo Van Hove is fantastic in all the things he's do done, and I don't think he's doing anything right now, but even ASMing for him would be fantastic. Other than that, I really don't know right now, because... I'm not watching or doing anything like with music or movies or shows. I mean, most of the shows on Broadway right now are fantastic. Don't get me wrong, I would love to work with Paula Vogel as a writer, but like that's not something I can just be like, please let me work with Paula Vogel, because not, I'm just going to do whatever. <laughs> At this point, <laughs> no choice anymore. 
Ha ha ha. I don't have one. Um, <laughs> please keep in mind, I'm living on a ship. Again, I haven't been watching things. I haven't been listening to anything. I try. Like, I got back here. I asked everyone to give me their music. And, like, I have. I've asked. No one has given me anything. I try my hardest to get music and movies and things to watch. And I watched a ton of TV when I got back here. But, like, I've been listening to a lot of Taylor Swift because I love Taylor Swift. And, I mean, all of my repeaters, <laughs> like fucking Paramore and Blink-182, those kind of things that just get on my playlist and I listen to them when I work out all the time, that's, that's what you get from me. <laughs> I don't have a favorite artist. I have a lot of artists that I love, that I follow. People like David Tennant, Matt Smith. Maya Rudolph. They're going to be in the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. Like Taylor Swift or Billie so Eilish, but I don't have a favorite right now at all. I do love Billie Eilish. I guess it's something I'm always trying to get better at, is to push myself more, motivation-wise. I've gotten a little bit better motivating myself, and I've gotten a little bit better at relaxing rather than driving myself insane trying to get things done. So that's something, but I don't know. I don't think I've learned that much else. I mean, other than a lot of tech, but that's just helpful in the career aspect of things, not in life. Fix your resume. Always go back and fix your resume, because if you need to do any job ever, resumes are like very important, uh, and especially as a stage manager, if you keep your resume to only the things that you really enjoy and not something that actually means something to other people, like musicals that you may have worked on or plays that actually are, have more tech rather than are just people standing on stage. That's something to really put on a resume. You, skip you will never know everything. <laughs> That's keep so learning, keep listening to what other people have to say because there's so much new technology coming around and so much new things that you don't even know and you just have to keep learning that's all keep learning always that's a good one I would actually like to see more of what happened this year on Broadway with the musicals that were not cookie cutter here we're gonna redo Music Man here we're gonna do um, Pretty Women was last year, Mrs. Doubtfire, like, MJ, okay, yes, I understand, like, it is the story of MJ, but we are using all of MJ's music. Paradise Square, fantastic show, fantastic. I have read so many things about it, and I've listened to the whole soundtrack, and this is something someone just came up with out of their mind. I, we need more of that. We don't need all of this repeats. I mean, don't get me wrong, company was fantastic and the gender bent version was very universal and I really enjoyed it but I like that we were coming back to new theater rather than going back to the old. <laughs> I'd like the art world to be able to be the arts again. I mean it's crazy that we're not even able to go and see live theater anymore but, but I want to see what theater. changes in it's theater so because of the virtual shows that have happened yeah, that hasn't done because much. of all of the new advances and that kind of makes me sad because there's a lot that could be advanced I want to see from what we can bring and things like that. to the stage that we learned this past year that we never thought about bringing to the stage before Snapchat I feel like Snapchat is the easiest way for me to communicate with people <laughs> to see their faces especially especially when it comes to the people that I love that don't live anywhere near me because I'm from California. Most of my friends are still on Snapchat who are in California and I can just see their faces without having to be in person. And I feel like Snapchat is much more personal than uh, texting and I'm terrible at texting, but for some reason I'm great at Snapchat. Other than Snapchat, I'd say Instagram, I guess, but I almost never use Instagram. Okay. Still Snapchat. Sorry. I live on a cruise ship now. The best way to communicate with people, Snapchat and WhatsApp. Internet sucks, but I do my best. Snapchat is number one. I talk to my best friend Tess 
all the way in California, anywhere I am. I talk to Logan every day. I talk to Christina. I talk to tons of people through Snapchat. And then obviously WhatsApp is universal. This is the way to text when you're not in the US. So that's the only way I can get in touch with my mother at all is <laughs> WhatsApp. So those are my apps right now. Keeping my head up. Because, I mean, I'm doing a lot. I'm packing up my whole apartment and moving out. And uh, I'm going back to California to live for at least a little bit because I'm not going to have my apartment open to myself. And then um, it's just a lot. So I need to not look at the bad and look at the good. I mean, I'm going on a ship. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to get to go places that I've never been. But I'm still. Have, it's you live in a little metal box. It's very different from living in the real world and with the outside. So I got to keep my head up. I'm trying. Motivation. I got better at that. Because we were all stuck inside and doing nothing for months on end, the motivation to get up and do things is not as easily presentable <laughs> than it was. And I need to go, get back to being motivated to do the things that I love because I do love these things and I'm passionate about theater and I'm passionate about reading and I'm passionate about so much and I just don't do it as much anymore. And I need to push myself to be motivated to do that. I do a couple of things. First, I would buy my mom a house. It's because she so has done so much for me in my life and she deserves so much. And she has always wanted to own a house again. And I would love for her to be able to do that. And then I would pay off my student loans. And then I would give all of the rest of the money to charities because there are so many people out there that need money more than I do. And I think that they probably deserve it better than I do as well. Yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty much exactly what I would do. Added there that I'd probably get myself a place to live, that I could like have my friends come and live with me, like that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I bet I would give a lot more to the Actors Fund than I would give to most other charities, but only because I am a theater person and it would be great to see more good theater and for more actors to be able to get the things that they need in their lives so that they can go and do the theater. Yeah. But yes, I would buy my mother a house in a heartbeat. <laughs> if I had that kind of money, she deserves it. So, and my loans suck. <laughs> Hi, self. I hope that you're actually doing okay. I hope that this trip was fantastic for you and that when you got back, you actually went back to stage managing because I know how much you miss it. Um, and I hope that that means the world to you because that's all you want right now. Um, and I hope things are good and that you've gotten away from the stupid people that you need to get away from. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hi guys, I hope you ha enjoyed my video. Um, I'm Lacey, you can find me on my social medias and um, I'll be on a ship for eight months, so hopefully when I get back, I get to see more of the things that everybody's been doing. Uh, but I don't have much for you to look at. Sorry. Uh, have a good day. Bye, guys.